Jonathan Lambon. BBC Radio Leicester. I am beaming, literally beaming from one side of my mouth to the other, ladies and gentlemen, because we have a very esteemed guest that will be joining me in the studio in a matter of minutes. Really, really minutes this afternoon. I've not even seen him yet. He's in his dressing room getting ready. But Sooty will be joining us on the programme as our special guest <laughs> this afternoon. So stay with me for that. And also with him, of course, Richard Cadell, who's here in the studio. Uh, we'll be speaking to him very, very shortly indeed, of course. He is the man who is the presenter of the legendary Sho Sooty show. Uh, he's been doing that for the last 12 years. He's, he's a re he really, I hope he is in Who's Who, because you really do need to know all about him. Of course, many of you will remember him from being here on BBC Radio Leicester as well as Wretched Richard on Tony Wadsworth's weekend shows. Um, he's done so many things in his life and we're going to be talking to him all about that very, very soon indeed. But as much as I'm so glad that Richard's here, I cannot wait to meet Sooty. He's on the way. You know what? I've done many things in my career and certainly in uh, my career in radio, but none of them have been really quite reaching the pinnacle of what I'm about to do over the course of the next Next hour here on BBC Radio Leicester and my special guest today is Richard Cadell. Richard welcome to the program <laughs> and thank you so much for coming in. It's an absolute joy to be back in my hometown for exactly. an afternoon and, and here thank you so much for inviting me. It or us, should I say? Well, well, absolutely, and I, I know the city's in his dressing room at the moment. He's Indeed. just getting ready. He's just uh, putting yeah, makeup on. He is. He is. I mean, you have what must arguably be the best job in the world, don't you? Well, uh, yeah, I love doing what I do. I've always been a big Sooty fan, and my roots, especially my Leicester roots, were doing uh, Punch and Judy and puppet shows when yeah. I was a little boy, a very small boy. So to become Sooty's right-hand man as such is kind of a dream job for a young puppeteer to, to wish for, and one that's uh, never likely to come up, you know, because in my day of growing up with Harry Corbett firstly, and then Matthew Corbett, yeah. it was just one of those jobs that you thought would always be... Matthew Corbett, you yeah. know, so um, it was uh, an absolute dream come true, and I just love every second of it. And here we are. What I, a great I, job. I think it's brilliant. I, I, you know, I, I, I mean, like, a lot of people message me when, when we've got guests coming in, and they say, will you ask this? Will you ask that? You know, can, 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 can we see some pictures or whatever? But I've been deluged. I've had loads of people, and, and people emailing me and saying, please, I remember him when he did this, and they all know my family and all that kind of thing. Uh, if, By the way, if anyone's listening in who wants to send uh, a question in, for me to ask Richard, I can't possibly deny you that privilege because uh, because he's here this afternoon and oh. so many of you have been trying to get in touch. What well, the best way to do it is actually to text us uh, on eight one triple three eight one triple three and start your message with the word Leicester. Also, as many of you know, I am on Twitter at J Lampon, so you can follow uh, find me on there and uh, send me a message as well. And if you want to uh, follow uh, Sooty and Co, it's at Sooty and Co, all one word at Sooty and Co C O, um, and uh, you can follow them as well. You started the stage and getting out there as your theatrical debut at Leicester's Little Theatre. You were aged just eight years old, so you've always had the bug to perform there. Yes, yeah, I've always been uh, theatrical, as they would say. My mother was uh, a brilliant actress, um, sadly no longer with us, but she had her roots very much in Leicester. Little Theatre was very much um, her part of her heritage as well. She was very active there and she encouraged me from an early age. And my sister, who's also now on Hollyoaks, she's one of the lead parts on Hollyoaks, yeah. has been for a long time. So she was also encouraged, we both were, um, to perform as actors. And um, the magic came kind of as a, a sideline to, to acting. And uh, puppetry came, came also as a result of that. So yes, I've uh, certainly... Uh, you know, so as a kid, trod the boards here. Yeah. In my time. And when you were younger, when you were eight years old, I mean, did you did you play with puppets? Did you have puppets? Yeah, I had puppets it? prior to to that. When I was uh, when I was five or six, I had uh, one of my first memories. Really, was that my father was a doctor. Uh, retired now, Dr. Ronald One. She has a different surname. We've all got different surnames. It's complicated. <laughs> My father, Dr. Ronald One. And he had a patient who was um, retiring or, or something was happening and, and he had a an old Punch and Judy set, a whole theatre with puppets and everything, mm. and casually mentioned to my dad that he was going to sell this thing, and I was very small, five or six, and I remember they bought it, my mum and dad bought it for me, and I remember on Christmas morning them saying, okay, there's something downstairs set up in the lounge for you, and I remember, and, and I was very young, but I still remember the moment of seeing this puppet theatre, and it's almost something inside me kind of twigged, and I knew then that 
that that was more than just a toy that a kid played with. And I was doing puppet shows in, in people's gardens yeah. and then the, the Queen's Jubilee and, the, and, and stuff. And I started to do kids' parties with this puppet yeah. show set. So, um, yeah, I'd had puppets uh, as well as then starting acting. What, what, what were your earliest mem uh, memories of puppets? I mean, was it t the traditional Punch and Judy that you just remember? Is that your first ever viewing of, of, of puppets? Uh, possibly. Possibly Punch and Judy. Certainly Sooty and Sweep. Yeah. Certainly Sooty and Sweep. Um, and with Harry Corbett, of course. And, um, and I had all the magic round about puppets and stuff, you know. I mean, every kid, you know, has, I think, puppets at some time, you know, of their, of their life. And I just, just you know, I, I, I just loved them. There was something about it, you know, that excited me. And, and still do, because, of course, the, the merchandise as well that comes along. <laughs> Even I, I had a sooty. <laughs> and I had a sweet when I was a lot younger. And, yeah. And, and it was just, why do you think that, that sooty and sweep and, and the whole crew, you know, and Sue, etc., etc., why do you think it's lasted so well? I think there's lots of reasons. I think um, the simplicity of it is, is, is key to it. But I actually think it's unique in as much... Well, funny, we were talking about this with my dad this morning, we're trying to work it out. I think what's, what's unique about it is that it's probably the only TV show where a child can watch something on the television, mm -hmm. their parent can go to a toy shop, buy something that looks identical to what they're watching on television, mm. the child, within seconds of getting that toy, can put it on his hand and do virtually what they're seeing on television. So Sooty can live in their house uh, in exactly the same way he lives in their imaginations on non-TV, unlike a cartoon or a, a computer sort of graphic type of character. Or, you know, uh, it's unique in that, in that uh, respect. Um, Harry Corbett, the master, who I think is an absolute genius, and, and, and he was famously asked the same question, and he just said in his sort of northern accent, you know, that he didn't know why it worked, and it just did. So he, there was no real explanation. Um, also, I think another reason why it's endured is that most children, one of the first toys they get given as babies is a teddy bear. And so they're kind of, it's kind of in their subconscious before they can even talk. Then suddenly as they get to that preschool age, they're watching television and they see a teddy bear that, that moves and does silly things and is naughty. And, and you know, and, and, and so I think, again, it's, it's in there before anyone else is really. Now, um, we are talking about the, the big bear himself, of course, and haven't yet seen him is he is he ready do you think? oh jonathan he's always ready is he ready? He's ready do you know what i love about this there's been i've noticed on the facebook page we have a sooty facebook page people are saying how's it going to work on the radio you know <laughs> and because they do that and uh, and i'm really pleased for to see that you have set up in here a little microphone so i've got well, my microphone and then I, next to me we have you know do you know what i know he doesn't i know he doesn't have he's a, he's a bear of very few words yeah but uh, but i didn't want him feeling left out that well, was the whole problem richard i just thought if he comes in he doesn't even think i've even made the effort he'll just think Puh. Um, it's appreciated, Jonathan. You are slightly frightening me, but it's appreciated. <laughs> you know, um, it's good. So listen, let, let, this is what the audience at home are waiting for, is the moment when Sooty is on the radio. So it's going to call for a lot of imagination on half of your listeners, but for you, Jonathan, you get to knock on top of the box. Oh, please. Now, this oh is the box gosh. that, that people that remember. Now? Yeah, it's right, the, okay, the actual sorry. box. Just knock on the, the, the box, and hopefully... Sooty, Sooty, we're gonna... And here he is! Oh, Look at that! wonderful. Oh, my, what have you got? Oh, oh he's... <laughs> He's bought his little... Can you just put that down, please? Don't... Don't bang the microphone. Stop. I'm so... You don't... You, you wish you wouldn't have... You need to... <laughs> you wish you hadn't started this now. He's oh, waving at you. Hello, like, Sooty. How are you today? Is he well? He's whispering. He says he's very, very well. He's very thrilled to be here. Well, we're thrilled to have you, Sooty. We really are. We're absolutely honoured that you've come today. <laughs> I'm just... I'm so in awe. I mean, I'm just like... We have to take it with a childhood of hero. We will do. But we have to get it so your listeners can see. This is really happy. We'll tweet these, won't we? Let's do them, it. And put them on there. He's waving to all his fans at it, home in oh, Leicester. It's just absolutely adorable. And you've, you can see, just if you quickly look behind you, we've, ah. we've got about, you know, about a They're third the of BBC Radio Leicester. Oh, he's <laughs> pleased to see that too. <laughs> Don't keep backing on my finger now. Right in my face. Don't uh. leave it. I'm sorry, he's being very not. What's that? Oh, he's whispering. He said... This, oh, Jonathan, he says he's got a lovely surprise. It better not be the water pistol for Jonathan. What's that? He says there's somebody on the phone to is speak there? to you, Jonathan. Well, let's find out who it is. Who's on the phone? Hello, hello, hello. It's me, the one and only Mr. Turtle Brass. <laughs> you see, we move in, Sooty moves in, in very, very uh, esteemed circles, Jonathan, and we didn't tell you that we're great mates with the real... Basil Brush. Oh, Basil, how are you? Oh, I'm very well. Hey, I understand you've got Sooty in the studio, is that right? Yes, Sooty's here oh, as well. Oh, I tell you what, he's a sneaky fellow, you know, he's always whispering behind my back. Ha, 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 boom, boom. Hey, 
Jonathan, I tell you what, this 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 interview is going to win you a Sony award. This is, isn't it? I'm hoping. I'm going to. I'm going to. you what, this is going to be brilliant. You're going to go on to bigger and brighter things. You're going to run a lighthouse. <laughs> 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 oh, wonderful. Basil, how are you keeping? Oh, I'm very, very well. Yeah, I'm very well. In fact, I've got to be honest with you, I've been doing my fitness regime today. Oh, up, in. down, up, down, then the other eyelid. <laughs> yeah. And I've done 20 minutes jogging on the spot. Yeah, I've got my braces caught in the banister. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, Bob, hey! <laughs> uh, you, you and City are obviously very good mates as well. Do you, do you, oh, do, yeah. do we see you out of a, of a night time? Do you often, oh. do you ever party in Leicester? Yeah, oh, absolutely, mind you. I've got to be honest, you know, it sounds a bit rude, this, but sometimes I've been accused of leaving a bear behind. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, Bob, I'm on fire. I'm on absolute <laughs> fire today. Tell you, you are, Basil. You are. You're, 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 you're scorching. Here he comes, Mr. Richard Cadell. <laughs> cool, crikey. Mr. Richard Cadell, I tell you, he's a wonderful fellow, you know. He's covered in love bites. And most of them are self-inflicted. Bob, Bob! Should we just leave it to Basil? Leave it to Basil. I think we should. Do you know what? <laughs> you know, the next time I get some holiday time, Basil, I think I might sign you up. <laughs> oh, I think it's a very good idea. I've got the perfect face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> you Actually, I've got the perfect face for television. It's a bit fuzzy around the edges. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what, Basil, I grew up with you, and I also, as, as well as having a, a sooty as well, which I had when I was a kid, I also had a Basil brush. And, Did you really? Uh, uh, yeah, a lookalikey, and he had a, a little um, cord on the side of him with a sort of... Oh, yes. And you pulled the cord out. Oh, I see. That and sounds he, painful. <laughs> yes, it was. And, and then he would talk like you, and he would say, I love jelly... I'm not even going to try and do the voice, but he would yes. say, I love jelly babies. Do you love jelly babies? And then oh, it went, and he, all these things... Yeah, yeah. Well, I tell you what, there's a word for you, Mr. Jonathan. It's called Sado. Basil, it's so what? so lovely to hear from you. Ah, oh, bless you. What's on your mind apart from libel? <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot. <laughs> Good to talk to you, Basil. Thank oh, you so you. much. Any 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 words from Sutty or uh, or uh, you, he's Richard? He's speechless. <laughs> Always well, I tell you what, I'll leave you my words of wisdom, Mr. Johnson. Go on. You say this. If you look like your passport photo, you're too ill to travel. Passel, <laughs> thank you so much. Much thank love. Look much. after yourself. Ah, bless you. Bless you, Mr. Johnson. Thank you, care. Mr. Richard. See you soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Mr. Passel. Oh, <laughs> you got me coughing now. Yeah, honestly, I, oh, this is just this is just immense. You threw that one in. You didn't expect Basil Brush. No, I wasn't <laughs> expecting Basil Brush at all. Yeah. And, uh, just how wonderful. I mean, you know, it, it is so magical, isn't it? And in in a, in an age where we can, you know, continually having young people and, and people moan about young people say they don't do this and don't do that. It, it's obviously really important to keep traditions like Sooty and like Basil alive because they've worked so well for so many of us and they've got an awful lot to offer the younger generation still, haven't they? Absolutely. And I've been privy... A lot of people don't know, actually, of my connections with Basil Brush because I was involved in, in, in oh. producing and writing a lot of the Basil Brush shows. And I find that the great thing with Basil and Sooty uniquely is that the lovely people in the TV world have allowed us to keep them the same and have not, you know, we've not had to subject them to that kind of makeover to, to allow them to survive in, in 2012. They've said, no, it works. Yeah. And, and we've been allowed to do that and it's a great tradition that we've been allowed to, to keep on going and, um, you know, it, it just works still and it's just great. I just, you know, I just love the whole the whole idea. It's really it. interesting you mentioned that because earlier on on the show today we were talking about Camberwick Green mm. and it's being given a digital makeover and so they're going to basically enhance it and improve the colours and make it a little bit more slick. Mm. Now, I'm sure that that's what it possibly needs to get a new generation interested in it, but I couldn't help thinking that part of the charm was the fact that it was a bit wobbly and it was a bit, you know, it wasn't bright colours and, and that there was a bit of stilted movement and things like that. And to sort of somehow try and soup it up a bit takes away from what was the, the rawness of those materials. I would agree. 
I would agree with you entirely. And as I say, the evidence speaks for itself. We've not fiddled with the formula. The TV show is back on the air now. It's on every day. It has f phenomenal viewing figures. ITV are over the moon. Surprised, actually, at how much uh, it attracts viewing-wise. And we've been uh, so privileged that we've done exactly the original formula. So it proves it works. So I don't think there's a need to make these things over. And let Sooty be the champion of keeping it as it always was. What's Sooty been up to over Christmas? So should we... Oh, he's going to whisper. He's been very well behaved, actually, for the past few minutes. Basil's stunned him. But we've been busy. Actually, it's been a great Christmas. We've took the Sooty Show back into the West End of London. So we've been at the Garrick Theatre for the whole Christmas season with a West End show, which is phenomenal, really. Yeah. We had to pinch ourselves every day, walk down that stage, do our little show with Sweep and Sue, and we had uh, Santa Claus and uh, reindeers and kind of crazy things going on. But it was, um, yeah, a great privilege. And this year we've got a lot planned because it's actually, I heard you mentioning before the show started... Mm that sort of been around for years. It's actually 60 years on TV this year. This year. It's he looks incredible. What's his beauty regime? What's the secret? <laughs> Good fabric conditioner, you know, <laughs> drip dry. <laughs> it is looking very good for his age. Yeah. He's, uh, he's wearing well, forever eternally he fun of the Peter Pan of uh, the puppet world, I suppose. He, he must be also one of the best insured actors, I would have thought, because, you know, Sooty needs protection. We you know we love him dearly. We'd hate anyone to, to, to try and do anything to him or whatever. I mean, does he, does he go everywhere with do you go everywhere together? <laughs> it's going to seem really quite sad, isn't it, if I say yes? Um, he, he does come everywhere with me. Yeah, he does. Um, and and serious, this is quite a serious note. Uh, Harry Corbett never denied a child a chance to meet Sooty, even in his retirement, when Matthew was well and truly holding on to the reins and, and Harry was down there living in Dorset. If a child knocked on Harry's door, yeah. he would bring Sooty to the door. And I just think it's kind of a duty of mine to keep Sooty there because, you know, kids will expect to see Sooty. So yeah, I do look after him and... Uh, yeah, he's uh, well protected. He is. He is. He is looking incredibly good. How are the rest of the guys, Sooty? How is how is Sweep? How how is Sue? Uh, they're very good. They're very good. In fact, what's that, Sooty? Oh my goodness! What, what, what do you want to tell Jonathan? What? Oh, we haven't surprised him again. Would you believe um, that we should have on the line the legendary Sweep? Sweep, are you there? Oh, it's Sue, I believe. Because it's Sue. Sue. Oh, it's Sue. Sue. That's even better, Sooty's girlfriend. Hello, Sue. Hello, Jonathan. How are you? Oh, I'm so good, and I'm delighted to hear from you this afternoon. What a privilege. Well, it, well it's very nice to be talking to you. Um, I'm lying down here with something over my eyes because I'm resting after a very heavy pantomime season with the boys. Oh, dear. So you're just taking it easy, are you? I'm just taking it easy, but also I'm very concerned that Sotty's behaving himself, is he? He is behaving himself. He's been very good. Well, that makes a difference. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, did, did you have a lovely Christmas, Sue? Um, yes, I did. I did have a wonderful Christmas. Wonderful, busy Christmas. Mm. Um, missed the snow a bit this year because um, I did have a little sledge. And I do like ice skating, you see. <laughs> it's one of my hobbies. And, and I miss the ice, but now, never mind. Now, are you keeping an eye on the boys? Are you keeping an eye on, on Sooty and indeed on Sweep as well as you do so well? Well, as much as I can. I mean, the trouble is, it is a full-time job, and sometimes that panda does need a little time off, you see. And this is one of those days, I'm sorry I can't be there with you, but... I'm sorry um, as well, but it's so lovely to hear you. Yeah, well, Richard very kindly said I could have the afternoon off. And well-deserved so too, Sue, I might add. Well-deserved. <laughs> can I just ask, Sue, if you've got a message for the good folk of Leicestershire and Rutland this afternoon? Um, well, it's just keep watching the telly and i hope you have a very very happy 2012 and um we hope that uh, we'll be coming to see you um shortly all the children of leicester and all the grown-ups of course yeah, because it is a very special year i expect richard's mentioned that has he he has what yes. have you been talking about very are we going to see you here soon richard well we're hoping to do a theatre tour later in the year so you know it would be a joy to come back to leicester but we haven't anything confirmed yet but uh, we can keep coming to see you jonathan well, well, we no, you would very well to come back and see. Sue, are you a little high maintenance? I can't imagine you like the travelling that much. I, I can imagine maybe you'd like a nice when you go by train, it has to be a sort of business class or whatever. I can't see you slumming it. That's really, I uh, know, I don't like slumming it much. No, no, not at my great age of five. Um, no, I, well, you know, we're all a bit like that, aren't we? Well, you know, um, you need to be treated well in my book. Yes, exactly, exactly. Oh. Treated with respect and treated well, yeah. Yeah, I am a bit high maintenance, so seriously. 
yeah. Are you? Do you a bit of a diva at times, do you think? Um, well, only because I like things to be right. And um, <laughs> I, I, don't, uh, I don't suffer fools. I just like things to be right. Well, listen, <laughs> it's so lovely to hear from you. And thank you so much for coming on. You, you, you and Basil and, of course, Sooty as well have made my afternoon and think made my year. You know, this. I don't know who's going to get to live up to this now. Well, it is, yes. You, I mean, that is a bit, isn't it? I mean, having Basil on as well, that's marvellous, isn't it? Oh, so lovely I to mean, hear. I mean, lots of heroes for you. Lots of heroes and many, many happy memories as well. Sue, my darling, look after yourself. Thank you, Jonathan, and have a lovely rest of the day and uh, give Richard a kiss from me. We will do. <laughs> and Sooty's blowing a kiss to you, Sue. Oh, there yes. we are. Oh, thank you, Sooty. See you soon. Bye-bye, Sue. Sue. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. <laughs> Oh, I mean, the, the thing is, <laughs> the, 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 it is a really big team, isn't it? Although yeah. Sooty is kind of your main, yeah, he is. your main man, indeed. Um, but but people love the team, and do you have to work quite? I mean, if you worked, and indeed, did the Corbetts as well work on that in particular? You know, that they wanted to, to have a real feel of family. You know, Sooty Sweep and Sue, and yes, um, <coughs> very much so. And I think what's so nice about it now is that behind the scenes it's still the same family um who you know very much matthew's still very much a, a dear friend of mine mm. and and it's kind of not really involved anymore but i speak too often and i'm lucky to have have inherited his crew if you will who are dear dear almost they are like my family and so it is that it is very much a small very cottage industry kind of thing we write the scripts around a, a, a table it's very very this kind of tiny little office that we produce this stuff out of and uh, yeah it, we, they are like we are our, our very very close very close <laughs> um, i'm going to let sort of get some water and uh, and we'll make sure he's, he's well refreshed because don't Indeed. be drying out you, what's that sooty oh you, you, you shouldn't say water in front of sooty because of course oh, no. that could spurn a water attack <laughs> but he's promised to be on his best behavior <laughs> so we'll keep them away from the, the taps. <laughs> um, we'll be back with you. We'll be back with Sooty in uh, in just a few minutes' time. Uh, you know, I'm ha I am having such a laugh here. I know. I'm getting people messaging in. Uh, this is Radio Gold, loving it, says Nicky. Natalie says, uh, I love Sooty. He said, happy birthday to me many years ago at Loughborough Town Hall. He remembers. Does he? Yes. He's waving <laughs> it was away. A long, it was a very long time ago. <laughs> a very long time ago. He's yeah. waving a go uh, away, Natalie. Uh, well, so many other messages coming in as well. If you want, to, if you want me to ask a, a question for... Richard on your behalf uh, you can tweet me um, at J Lampon uh, you can also uh, text as well on 81333 that's 81333 do remember to start your text message with the word Lester it's at uh, 2.30 you're listening to uh, Jonathan Lampon here uh, ably assisted by Richard Cadell who is my uh, special guest uh, this afternoon um, of course uh, Richard uh, you know your love affair with Sooty began when you were incredibly young but how did you actually come to inherit him because um, you know as you, as you say about you know, he went through, you know, Harry Corbett, then through Matthew Corbett, which is kind of what I grew up with, remembering Matthew and Sooty. And then, of course, he, you know, he came to you as well. How did you, I mean, it was, how did uh, it work? Two factors were, were critical in bringing about what, for me, was a dream job. And the first was, when I was 15, I won the Young Magician of the Year, which is yeah. a magic circle competition. And as a result of that, I was asked to appear as a guest on the Sooty Christmas show. And this, this horrendous clip of me coming in dressed as Santa Claus when I was 15 is on YouTube now, which I hate watching because I'm awful. But nevertheless, I was a guest on the Sooty Christmas show and I did a magic trick with Matthew Corbett and Sooty. Um, and made my sort of love of Sooty known within the studio. I was absolutely in awe of the whole setup, the, the, the everything. So they kind of knew by the time I left, the day was over, that I was a bit of a, a Sooty fruitcake. But then we have to wind the, the clock forward many years, mm. um, 15 years. I was 30, and I was extremely lucky. I was working as an illusionist. I'd become a magician, full-time magician. And I had was very lucky to have aligned myself with one of the most, um, in my opinion, one of the, 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 one of the best theatrical agents in the country, um, who was... Um, uh, uh, who is Leicester-based, coincidentally. Though his offices were all in London, yeah. he's from Leicester. He's uh, Stanley Dallas, uh, who was one of the famous Dallas boys and then went yeah. into becoming an agent. And Stanley was representing me and happened to be at Granada Television and happened to be there when they said, Matthew Corbett's retiring and we're looking for someone. Anyone you could think of, they've got to be able to do magic. He said, well, Richard Cadell and Matthew Corbett. And hang on a minute, that's... Is that the kid that came in? Get him in. And it was kind of, it was, and I remember Stanley phoning me and saying, are you sitting down? And I went, what? He said, 
they want to see you, Matthew Corbett's retiring. I went, what? You know, and it was six months of sleepless nights when I thought, I can't believe that he's going. This is my dream job. They actually want to see me. Um, and Stanley was brilliant. He was absolutely brilliant. Um, and everyone was very supportive. And when I saw Matthew after I got the job, he gave me a big hug and said, well, there you go. You know, and it was, it was just brilliant. So that's how it came to be. A great agent and a little bit of history with City. So do you, so, so without getting into all the sort of the business angle of it necessarily, Sooty's yours now, is he? He is now. It was w wonderful. I mean, this was another great thing that happened. Is it like um, a football? Is it like a, a, you have to pay a transfer fee? Is, uh, is it it was it? a bit like that. Matthew, I mean, the business side of things, we'll just, you know, I can do it very quickly. Mm. Matthew Corbett sold the rights to Sooty, the whole thing, lock, stock and barrel, uh, to a, a, a Japanese investment company that were right. looking to, to make some money, bluntly. Um, they had sold it to Hit Entertainment, a globally successful company who have international products all over the world, who felt that, and, and I worked for Hit Entertainment, as their presenter, I was an right. employee, and they felt um, that Sooty, as time went on, was really something that only the English kind of got, it didn't suit their portfolio of global properties, and they decided to put him up for sale, or the property, my gosh. and my brother, who is my business partner in other ventures, I said to my brother David, you know, we have to do this, because like, you know, I can't, for two reasons, A, I can't bear to see this finish, Mm. You know, which was the prospect of it, of it ending, and somebody, you know, you know and, and and B, you know, I, I've. Um I've, this is my dream job and I want to carry on doing it. And you want uh, to be able to control it as well, don't Well, you? that's been the great thing, is to be able to implement all the things that I feel are right for Sooty. And it's very simple, it's just stuff that I watched as a kid. I mean, I'm, the stuff I'm doing on TV now is stuff that I, I've seen Harry Corbett do and I've got all Matthew's old videos. Matthew gave me all Harry's tapes. And I was sat with Matthew the other day, I said, I'm going to do the pottery sketch. He went, oh my God. Goodness. And he said, my f he quoted, he said, my father would be tickle pink. He said, to be tickle pink, you're dragging up this stuff and doing it again. You're still good friends as well, aren't you? Yeah. You still keep in touch. Yeah, he loves, um, he loves. Uh, Why does he, uh, you see, I, I, it, it must have been incredibly hard for him just to, to stop and just to hand it all over. Why do you think he wanted to sort of not get rid of it? Because that sounds awful. But why do you think he wanted to cut his ties with it? I know exactly why, and it's been documented, so I don't think I'd be breaking a confidence to tell you. He had promised his lovely wife wife of many years that when he got to 50 he would retire she had lived and breathed sooty all her married life and she said you know as much as she loved it and it bought them a nice house and stuff there had to be a cut-off point and she said Matthew, you know, when you get to 50, we're agreeing that you're stopping this, or oh, this is the end for us. And he got to 54, and she said, look, you've had four years more than you should have had, so this, you know, come on now. And, um, and, and that was kind of the reason um, that he said, OK, I've done it, I've enjoyed it, this is the moment, and somebody came along with the money. But he still loves it. And, um, and I, wait, I had a meal with him the other evening, and uh, he asked me, he said, um, would you ever sell it? I said, never. He said, I knew you'd say that. He said, I'm glad and never. And I, I think, you know, he doesn't regret selling it. I'm sure he doesn't regret it. He misses it desperately. Mm. But, um, you know, I would never sell it. And uh, I think he did it to save his marriage. And he has a great, ret not to save his marriage, he was never in trouble. But he has a great retirement now. He did everything he wanted to do. And uh, the great story with Matthew is he always wanted to be a rock star. He never wanted necessarily to be Sooty's right hand man. He yeah. just inherited it. And now he is the rock star he wanted to be. He's got a band. He plays in pubs and he gigs all over the place under a slightly different name. Um, and he, he's got that guitar and he plays all that, that, that music. How he's wonderful. living the life he wanted to so he's extremely happy um, um, Harry Corbett had had Matthew Corbett that he knew that Matthew would 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 inherit it and take over Sooty and, and the Sooty the Sooty name uh, indeed Sooty would live on Sooty and friends would live on um, they w were incredibly fortunate to have found you and you were obviously find them to now get this job who were you pass it on to. Well, I don't know, Jonathan. Do you fancy it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> don't tempt me, honestly. <laughs> I don't know. Do you know, there's a lot of people that write. There are several young men who, or young boy, the boys, really, who are on our fan club page who say, I want your job. And they, I've got one lad at the minute who might, I'm sure will even listen to this interview because they have a big Facebook fan following. They they watch and listen to everything we do. I have one lad that's, I don't know how old he's, he can't be very old, he must be 12, 13, something like that. He's already writing scripts and sends me them. And they're good. They're good. Uh, one of the lads that's write, writing the scripts for the TV series, uh, he's young. He came to me when he was 18. He said, I've been a lifelong study fan. I've watched the stage show. Can I write you some scripts? He's now writing our TV scripts. So there's loads of young wow. people that love it and want to do it. So I don't think there'll be a shortage of, of candidates to take over what I do. But the important thing is that Sooty is the star of the show.
and he's the one they want. And as long as we remember that, it doesn't really matter who's with him. It, it's about Sooty. I mean, it's lovely that you're talking to me, but it's he's about the star. Him. He's the, when the, yeah, the kids want to see. While him. he's still away, uh, we're going to have a bit of music in a minute, and we'll, that'll give us a chance to get him back out of uh, back out of his green room. Um, okay, okay. Uh, and we'll talk we'll talk more to him. But while he's away at the minute, and I asked you if I could ask you this before, because I didn't I didn't want anyone going. I can't believe you asked him that question. Is he the original Sooty? Ah! Why did you ask me that question? I told you not to ask me that question. That's terrible. You're ruining it for the kids. Um, do you know, that I'm, this is great because you're actually the only person that's ever really given me the chance to explain the myth. And there's so much rubbish on the internet about people claiming what happened. I'll tell you while this Sooty is away. There's been many Sooty helpers throughout the year. Right. And of course, the Sooty you've seen today is the Sooty that's on TV. He's the one. He's the Santa Claus. Mm. But let me tell you the story. When Harry discovered Sooty in 1948 on the North Pier at Blackpool in that joke shop, he discovered Sooty, it was bought to entertain Matthew and his brother while they were on holiday, on an otherwise dismal holiday. It became part of Harry's little kid's party magic act. Harry wasn't a professional magician, he was just doing something as a hobby. Uh. And it was quite successful, and I know this is the truth, so I've talked to Matthew about this. It was quite successful, and so much so that when it started to get a bit worn, he chucked it away and went and bought, a, bought another one. And nobody knows what happened to the original first few because Harry had no conception. As I asked it, Matthew, I was going to a conversation the other evening with Matthew. He said that if Harry had known, it would have been in a glass case yeah. somewhere. Yeah. A lot of people claim to have the original one. There is no such thing. It doesn't exist. But and nobody knows. The Corbett's don't even know where the earliest one is. We believe we've got the earliest surviving sooty in a case which is on the North Pier at Blackpool. And we did our research pretty heavily. It came up for auction a couple of years ago. I went along and, and bidded for it. Paid stupid money, but we do believe it to be the, one of the, the earliest surviving ones. And so I suppose that's the, the best example. Yeah. But the real sooty, of course, is, is living on forever and he is still yeah, around. So let's not true. break the magic. But that's the real truth. That's the real truth of the story. We're going to talk to that bear in a, a little bit yeah. more detail in just a moment's time. But first of all, let's have some music. It's uh, 18 minutes to 3 o'clock here on BBC Radio Leicester. While we get ready for Sooty, I'm sure he'll be dancing for this. Um, hot stuff and Donna Summer there. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just loving this. I, I, do you know what? I'd, I'd take over the radio station and just do this till till we get to the Tigers oh. game on later on. Tonight. I hope your listeners at home are enjoying the fact they can't see <laughs> yes. this lovely bear. They can, but the great thing is they all know what Sooty looks like. They so do. And, and, just, he, and he is here. You know what? Well, I'm being really he's, honest. He's here. Should we just get him out Go again? Get him Come out on, again. let's prove it. How do you get right this minute? That, oh... He's through again. Don't keep banging it. I'm sorry about this. Just give me the, give me the, give me, give me that. <laughs> give it, give, give, oh. <laughs> well, we'll have to get Sue oh. on to him. <laughs> yes, you, you're going to be in big trouble. No, Jonathan doesn't want to see the water, but don't, don't do that. He's got, oh, he's got the magic wand out now. Look oh. at that. Do you know the magic spell? I do, I do. Go Can on, Jonathan. With you. Izzy Wizzy, let's, let's get, get busy. busy. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Oh, wow. Of course Sorry. I know the magic it's spell. taking a bow as well. Oh, gosh. Do. <laughs> now, um, I believe somebody, um, somebody's rung up to talk to him. What's that? Oh, you, it's because you said the magic spell, you see. You've, well, you've that created a bit of a, uh, well, yeah. I don't know who it is. Situation. Is Let's... there anybody there? <laughs> <laughs> it's Sweep is on the phone. <laughs> oh, Sweep, hello. <laughs> Did you get that? Um, uh, say that again for me, Sweep. Did you not get that? I'm trying to. Come on, come on. He's so, 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 look, let's let's teach him. Say hello, Jonathan. <laughs> oh, you see, now I got now, that. Go, all right, cute. now ask that question again, sweet. We'll we'll get him. See, see if the listeners can get this. Go on, ask the question, sweet. <laughs> How are you? Yes. yes of course. Yes, it, look, it's of easy. Course. I tell you what. Why don't, look, this this is good. Why, why don't we see if people at home can get it? Because people have got a problem understanding sweep, but it's easy when you get into it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Look, okay. He's just said, have they? Yeah, you see, you're yes. in. All right, okay, quick question. All right, let's do this. What did you have for breakfast this morning, sweet? <coughs> What's that, Jonathan? And again, sweet? Say again. <coughs> it's porridge. Porridge. Okay. <laughs> all right. Oh, okay, it. okay. Oh, another okay. one, okay. another one, sweet. Another, another one. one. Off you go. <coughs> did you get what that was? Sausages and bacon? No, that was corrugated iron. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you have to... You, you, the, the, the listeners... Right, the last one, then, for the listeners. Oh, last one, sweep. See if you get this, Jonathan. Go on. Uh, 
Oh gosh, I'm really struggling. Uh, uh, Should we give you? Yeah, go on, give me a clue. That was stratified epithelium. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we play that. <laughs> Sweet, we, we, we spoke to Sue earlier on Sweep, and she's yeah. she's been very. Oh, that's just so cute. Um, and uh, she said you've been really busy on tour. Have you enjoyed yourself? <laughs> oh really? And what? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, wait, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, you start now. <laughs> Carry on. Well, let's. Um, uh, how many? How many times have you? How many times have you been to Leicester Sweep? He doesn't know. No, I knew he didn't know. You got it. You see, yeah, I've got it now. But I've he's got it now. He is planning to come because he's he's doing a little tour. In fact, we're not we're not too sure about it. So he's shaking his head. He's doing a tour to promote his latest CD. Yeah. Um, that he's he's got uh, released um, coming up soon. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's singing classics. Are you singing? You got. <laughs> He is. He's singing classics. Is he's he? doing a, look, he's got an album out. Look, what's he? that, Sadiq? What's that? Oh, look. He, well, he's giving to you now, Jonathan. It's wow. a CD. Is this Sooty? Uh, uh, this is your CD, obviously, it's, isn't it? Well, it's Sweep CD. And it, well, it's Sweep CD as well. Oh, sing along. Oh, yes, of course. Now, um, what's your favourite track on there? <laughs> I, well, that's Sweep. What's your favourite track, Sweep? Yay! <laughs> Ness and Dora, even I got that one. <laughs> What's that, Susie? Are you going to play it or what? <laughs> yes, all right, okay. Sweet, thank you, thank you so much for joining us. It's lovely to talk to you, and just for you, and just for Sooty, and for everyone, all the boys and girls back at home. This, in the, oh, hold on a second, because I'm just, oh, hold on. I'm Shove off. it in the slot. No, 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 it's fine. I'm just, I'm just, there we go. Here we go. This is, this is Sweep singing Ness and Dorma. Listen, sweet. Thank you so much. Look after yourself and have a have a lovely weekend. And I hear that um, is, is sweet with Sooty tomorrow because Sooty's on TV tomorrow. Isn't yes, it? we are. Yeah, in fact, uh, yeah, that would be a good chance. If any of your listeners want to relive their childhood, then switch on ITV at uh, ten past seven yeah. in the morning every Saturday morning. Our show is on. You'll be able to see me and the guys doing the same old stuff, oh. uh, but it's classic stuff. Yeah, I don't know what the episode is tomorrow, but uh, do you know what you episode know? it is, <laughs> sweet. There we are. Good. Good. Oh, we know. Right. Thank you very much for that. Sweet, lots of love to you. I wish you were here. I'll give you a really big hug. You're, you're, you're a real favourite of so many uh, so many listeners. And uh, we'll catch up with you soon. Look after yourself. Bye-bye, Sweet. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. I got it. You see, you get yes. into the rhythm of it, don't you? <laughs> I love that. I love that so much. Dear old... Uh, Dear old sweet there with us. Mm. Uh, meet Damien, by the way, who's, Hello, uh, Damien. who's up next. Nice to Damien, he's shaking oh, Sooty hi. by the paw. Hi, Sooty. Wow. Hi. Um, is Sooty left or right-handed? Uh, <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> well, I, I'm not sure. What, what's that? He's going to... Oh, he's, hang on. What, he's picking something uh, up now. So if we'll he's see getting he out a water up. pistol. Oh, oh, no! <laughs> Damien, you... No! None of the... No! Stop doing the... Well, it's proved conclusive.
conclusively he is right-handed. Look at that, he's holding the right hand. And no, no, Jonathan. Oh, no. Not me as well. Because of the desk. So he don't do that. Because he famously put one of the BBC local radio stations off the air once for oh, that did he? Whistle. Yes, he did. Oh, no. Don't do that. So, hang on. My Can reward we... for asking a serious... <laughs> Damien is now covered in water. He is. My dripping off the lenses. For asking a serious journalistic question was water in the face. <laughs> You, see, you, don't, you don't get He's, that from Peter Salisbury, do you? He's smiling. Yeah, you can't go wrong. Was that, is that gin or is it water? Bleach. Bleach. <laughs> oh, um, you're here from three. I am. It's um, me and Roger de Corsi uh, for, for two hours. No, in fact, how can you follow, um, you know, one of your childhood heroes? How can, how can you ask me to put a radio show on? So uh, we're just going to shut the BBC down for two hours. It's going to play this yeah, for the Yeah, just repeat hour. it. If you just don't listen... Do not listen after three. Just go onto the iPlayer and listen again for two hours uh, because the, the next two hours is going to be uh, dreadful. We are. Um, well, I'm don't I'm don't gonna, yourself up. Well, I'm going to try because I need the money. Um, <laughs> You'll be fine. The Military Wives, you heard of them? Yes, I have. Uh, the number one. You're a fan of the Military Wives, City? There uh, you see. Yeah, uh, the, big, uh, the big song over Christmas. Uh, they've been nominated for a Brit Award. Oh, have they? Yes. Um, so we will uh, hear from them a little bit after three this afternoon. They... I know that's a really horrible thing to say, but do you think that will be a bit of a done deal? Because uh, it, it will be, you can't offer that up and then not give it to them. Do you know what I mean? Well, if it was who's, vote... who's choosing it? Uh, well, this is it. If it was voted for by the public, I'd say it's a done deal. But um, the Brits, a lot of it is done by the panel. Um, single of the year, I'm not sure who's voting for it. Right. But if it was industry insiders, probably not. Yeah. Um, It'll be interesting to see. I mean, I don't mean that nastily. I just because I think they deserve everything. Well, there was a wave. A wa there's always a wave of emotion behind a, a charity yeah, single, yeah, yeah. and anyone that dares stand in front of it is likely to get knocked out of the way. Mm. So, um, you know, if you didn't like, if you didn't like it as a single, as a piece of music, that's fine. Or indeed, Ness and Dorma by Well, I'm well, just thinking. By sweep, to be they're missing a trick, not nominating that. Oh, I think I want to see uh, Sooty Sweep and Sue. Uh, in fact, at the Brit Awards uh, this year. <laughs> you um, never know. It could be my, achieved. Yeah, my first memories of watching Sooty Sweet <coughs> was um, one of them was having a bath. I don't know what the other two were doing, but definitely one of them was, ha <laughs> one of them was having... The other two might have been assisting, uh, in yeah. fact. Um, so, yeah, military-wise, you'll hear from them. There's a bit of a foreign exchange taking place at the Leicester Comedy Festival um, this year. Find out more just after half three. Uh, swap between Leicester and Denmark. Uh, your movie review, find out if that film War Horse is any good or not. Oh, yes. Everyone says the book's fantastic, but the movie... Movie. We don't know. Stage show is going to be great as well, yeah. isn't it? The West End um, stage show. And it's Friday the 13th, which probably explains a lot of things around yeah. here. Is it full moon tonight? It wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> um, so a couple of uh, superstition-inspired songs in your two to choose. Lovely, Damien. Thank you very much. Damien St. John here uh, from 3 o'clock, which is around about uh, five minutes' time. Uh, Richard, when you're not with Sooty and family... Um, when you when you sort of you know when you're not when you're not together, do you miss him? I mean, do you sort of sit there sometimes when he's not by your side and actually think, I really wish he was here. He would keep me oh. occupied. Ah, uh, or do you quite like the break? I mean, do you need? Do you, you ask me this? is a serious question. Yeah, do you need um, to actually cut yourself away from him? Do you know, I tell you what, it's always in my subconscious, and I'll be walking around the supermarket and I'll see something and think, oh, that'd be a really funny sketch. It's done in the, in the or someone will fall over or something or the, and I'll just get an idea for something. So I can't switch off. You know, is the answer. So, um, you know, yeah, I do kind of miss it. So he's always in my thoughts, you know, always in my thoughts. So what we can do next, what's the next sketch, what's yeah. the next gag. And know? have you ever done anything random, like got up and thought, right, he's coming shopping with me today, and you just walk around with him, and there he is, right. shopping, like in the um, trolley or something. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but no, I haven't done anything like that. And I'm not that. trying to, you know, no. I just had this beautiful I did vision. try, but they gave me some pills, and I never <laughs> did it again. But um, the, 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 I would say that when we write the show... Yeah. Uh, uh, this is how we write it. Um, I, I write the show with uh, Alex Skerritt and Wink Taylor, who are great friends of mine. And we sit uh, around the table okay. with Sooty Sweep and Sue, and they're there. And we pick up the props, and that's how we do it. We don't sit there without them. They're there. And we have to, they have to be there. And that's how we write it. You couldn't do it without them. Yeah. So they're an integral part of the, of the process. So they have to be there when we create the nonsense. You, you've obviously become very much associated with City, uh, with City and, and, and but you, do you sometimes miss the fact of not being your own man? Do you sometimes sort of think, I wish I was sort of just, I wish I was Richard Cadell on the stage as Richard Cadell, no. not with City? Do, do you ever... Do you ever feel he may have stolen your limelight? No, no. I had a great career doing what I did before I met Sooty, and no, it's brilliant. I wouldn't swap this for the world. I, I you know, as I say, I, I, no, no, I love it. I've got no, no, 
in fact, I quite like the sort of anonymity, if you like, of uh, being able to step back and let Sooty be the star, you know, of the thing. And I quite like it when people say, well, Richard Kiddell wasn't very funny, but Sooty was really funny. <laughs> That's great. So, I mean, I'm really happy to, you know, um, to, to obviously, uh, you know, manipulate and do what's, what I do. What's interesting with Sooty, of course, is that uh, he talks to you, obviously, he whispers to you, but he doesn't talk aloud and he doesn't talk to other people. No. Would you ever consider working, or did you ever consider working as a ventriloquist i did do i did have a vent act when i was younger yeah and i did that ventriloquism uh, actually i did worked it up quite well i did it in the hinkley panto i was a oh, star gosh, of the hinkley, wow. star of the hinkley panto sounds a bit big headed me to say that I was in the hinkley panto years ago when i was 17 and i'm gonna go and see it tonight actually it's a brilliant pantomime but i did my ventriloquist act there for a couple of years so um i did do a vent act yeah yeah at one time i don't think i've had as much fun in this hour, with, as I say, and as I said at the top of the programme, with all respect to all the guests that I've interviewed, as I have today, and a thank you for making that so special. Thank you so much. It's always lovely to come back to Leicester. It's such a, you know, it's such a special place for me. It represents all my childhood and everything that I did when I was a kid around here, and I'm just grateful that you've had us back. Oh, and, no, um, any We'd love to come back again. You're yeah. very welcome. If thank we, you. When you get some dates for Leicester, when you know when you're coming back, when you, uh, I, I know Tony Wadsworth's really keen to see you as yeah. well, um, and we didn't get the chance to really go into all of that, but um, will you come back and will you see us and bring yeah. the team with you? Yeah, it would be a pleasure. Be I'd pleasure. love to. Richard Cadell and Sooty, there of course. Is. Come on, Sooty. We have to say this properly. Come on, come on out. Because we always say, you know, when we're leaving, we always say the same thing, which is, uh, come on, Sooty. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Take care. Thanks ever so much. I'll see you.